A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now it happened that as Jesus was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he asked them, Who do the crowd say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But others say, Elijah, and others, that one of the prophets of old has risen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. And he strictly charged and commanded them not to tell this to no one. To tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, there are many things that people throughout the centuries have said about Jesus. Some say that he is a great teacher, some say that he is a great prophet, some say that uh, what he has brought into the world is a great amount of good, he is a great moral teacher. But there are also very severe critiques of Christianity by some atheist philosophers uh, and some of them are quite incisive in their uh, critique of this. For example, some of them have critiqued our belief that Jesus has died on the cross for our sins, saying that it is uh, a teaching that encourages people to shirk their own accountability and their responsibility for their own moral failings. But is that what Christianity is teaching us? That because Jesus has died on the cross for our sins, as he has predicted in today's gospel, it means that we do not need to live moral lives, that we can live our lives without any responsibility and do whatever we like, and then we've got a free ticket to heaven if we believe in Jesus. If this is what Christianity is, then I'm sure none of us would want to follow it. But this is not a true representation of what we believe. What we believe is basically, we believe in a God who loves us so much that He is willing to come near to us sinners in order to teach us the way to live. And in the process of coming close to us, sinners, though we are, God was killed by sinners. God incarnate in Christ when he came into the world, knew that he was risking coming close to people who would reject him, who would reject his message and his person, and yet he chose to draw near to us. This is the good news, that God cares enough for us that he desires to enter into our time and history in order to save us. And in the process, in his permissive will, he allowed himself to be a victim of our sins. We participate in the reversal of sin when we begin to live virtuous lives. We begin to participate in the life of Christ, not just when we believe in him, but when we are united to him in prayer, in sacrament and in action. And so you and I, by being members of the church, are called to be a part of the reversal. The question of the identity of Christ is not just a theological or theoretical question. It's a question that begs Christians about how we live our life. My dear brothers and sisters, all the saints in the church, and including the saint of today, realize this at a very deep and personal level. And that's why their lives were filled with good works. In order to show that when we are united to Christ, our lives are transformed by His presence within us. St. Vincent de Paul became a priest at the age of 19. He was educated by the Franciscans. And by the age of 24, he was captured by Turkish pirates. And uh, while he escaped from the clutches of these pirates, he was able to minister to those who were his fellow slaves 
in such a way that he also won over a convert among one of his captors who ran away with him. Not only that, St. Vincent de Paul then went on to establish the Congregation of the Missions, and this congregation dedicated itself to evangelization and especially to the service of the most abandoned of his times. He established an asylum for those who were struggling with mental diseases. He also uh, created an orphanage, a place for care for the elderly. All these apostolic works, all in order to show that when a person's life has been touched by Christ, they can never be the same. And this is the crux of what we mean when we say that Jesus came to die for us. It's not as if the Father sent the Son in order to directly will His death, but the Father willed the Son to enter into our human reality to show how much God cares for us. And in His permissive will, He allowed that sinners should crucify Him on a cross. But He shows that His love triumphs over every form of evil, sin and suffering and death by His resurrection. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, when we present the gospel message to others, we must be careful about what kind of language we use. We must remember that the message of the gospel is first and foremost a message of the good news of God's love in our lives and His power to save even the most hopeless situations in our lives. This is the power we receive in a very discreet manner in every Eucharist. Jesus continues to humble himself and give himself to us for our salvation, if we will only receive him with faith. Let us pray for the grace of a lively faith filled with good works, as in the example of the life of St. Vincent de Paul. Amen.